There are plenty of people who'd like a real-life Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, and honestly, it could be closer than we think. Whether it's being delayed because of COVID or some other factor that we can't account for, a real-life Freddy Fazbear's would be fun as hell, no pun intended. There were people asking Matt, Pat, and Scott to work together to make it happen, but guess what? I've come up with a strategy that could totally work, even if it may need some tweaking because it's the US and I'm working with like Canadian prices and laws and stuff, but it could still translate to an actual plan that can really work to get us a real life Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, except hopefully without the murder and convoluted story that we don't totally understand. I even made a couple mock-ups so that this can actually happen. So, share this with Scott on Reddit if you want to see a real life Freddy Fazbear's and let me jump in. Firstly, location, 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 right? The obvious answer here is to go with the closed Chuck E. Cheese location. Chuck E. Cheese recently has closed 34 locations across the US, with locations closing in California, Colorado, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, Iowa, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, Nebraska, Nevada, New Mexico, New York, North Carolina, Ohio, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, South Dakota, Texas, Utah, Virginia, and Wisconsin. So, any of these locations could be used as a potential first location at the very least, with some states having multiple closures. Buying one of these locations would be expensive, and online I couldn't find any real reports on how much it would be. You'd have to work that out with Chuck E. Cheese. However, to open and operate a Chuck E. Cheese location would range from 1.17 million to 1.83 million, with a franchise fee of 800,000, according to Chuck E. Cheese's section of FranchiseHelp.com. So assuming the higher end of the price range, this would require an investment of around $2.63 million. Not taking into account that these locations are closed and they're probably just looking to break even on it and maybe not make money. But which state should we be selecting? Well, looking on Google Trends, we can actually see what states search for Five Nights at Freddy's the most. Looking for the search term Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, since, you know, that would be the name of the location, we see Virginia searching it the most over the past 12 months, as of April 2021, followed by Florida, Pennsylvania, Illinois, and Texas in that order. Comparing that to our list of states, Virginia is the state with the highest search and has a close location in Fredericksburg. And I don't know about you, but the fact that it's in Fredericksburg, you know, like Freddy, that seems like fate to me. But there is also the thought of Florida, who is the second most searched and is only slightly less searched, so like it's like a close second, and has multiple Chuck E. Cheese restaurants closed, located in Miami, North Lauderdale, Miami Gardens, and Green Acres. So there is room for expansion. Florida is also a popular tourist spot thanks to the Disney Park in Orlando where I would go with my family. I think we've went like two or three times. So it's probably a better idea to go with Florida's Miami location, even though Orlando and Miami aren't really that close, but it's still centralized, okay? And everything's open in Florida, so you can start work on it right away. So the Miami Chuck E. Cheese location is the first one to be bought by Scott Coffin. What would it look like? Well, many fan creations always make it appear the same as just a normal Chuck E. Cheese, but replacing the logo and text. Probably the most famous one being the image used in MatPat's old FNAF theories. But we could take this one step further. Since the inside of the restaurant is already seen in game, we can take that same design concept and just convert it to real life. I feel like that's pretty obvious. With the red and black squares along the wall, potentially outlined with additional decoration, you would also need to either replace or repaint the tables and booths and stuff like that, along with replacing the posters on the wall and the banners hanging above. The purple would also be changed to another color, most likely red, or maybe Maybe more of the red and black square pattern we see along the walls in the first couple games. The animatronics, if included, could easily be updated with Freddy, Chica, and Bonnie designs. Well, I mean like easy in comparison to everything else that needs to be done. And once that's done, you just need to replace the songs that play out of the speakers and then boom, you got working stage shows. I don't know if Foxy would need to have his own section or if you'd want to like add that off off to the side or if you want to use the the kind of like separate stage that's on some of the Chuck E. Cheese stages. I don't know, it depends on the location, if it actually has one. But other than that, that's just more construction work. Now, what makes this different than your typical kids play joint, you ask? Well, it does actually have the FNAF characters, not infringing on copyright because Scott would be doing this all himself. There is another aspect of the place that I think would make this even more unique and bring in more sales. FNAF is a horror franchise after all, and for some reason a whole load of these kids love being scared crapless by the many animatronics. So uh, why shouldn't this location offer a spooky surprise for anyone willing to come after dark? 
Much like how Security Breach will have a day and night cycle, why not let the restaurants have the same? Where instead of closing at 9 p.m., they swap to a creepy and horror themed joint where the kids can come to get scared while eating pizza and playing games. You know, the lights can flicker, you have people dressed up. Like a year round haunted house. We could even get some of the games we see in Pizzeria Simulator, like Fruity Maze and Midnight Motorist, in real physical arcade machines. All you need is a TV monitor. People do it all the time on YouTube. It would actually be an incredible idea that would suck in a lot more people and increase profits late into the night. This also works for adults who are fans of the series, who may not want to deal with the children and the kid-friendly atmosphere that the location would have during the day. This time frame would feature actors in the FNAF suits, but not Springlock suits because, well, <laughs> we all know how that ends. But this would be just like a Halloween haunt for our Canadian friends or whatever Disney does. It's like Halloween Horror Nights or whatever it's called over there. People in costumes who can't touch but aim to scare, maybe jiggling some doors or hiring actors working as kids or patrons who get lured away, maybe even make Making a nightmare Fredbear suit. There is so much that you can do. Oh, you can have like Foxy slowly peek out from behind it unless someone like looks or something like that. You can have him slowly peek out and then you can. Oh. Eventually, of course, you could expand, opening more fast beer locations at the other closed Chuck E. Cheese's. And I feel like Chuck E. Cheese would be down for that too, because the resulting competition could help boost their sales as well, since there would be kids who don't want to go to a horror themed joint at night, but have a newly ignited or rediscovered joy for pizzeria arcades and animatronic bands. And hell, even as a joke, you could open up Chica's Party World, because you all we all know that Scott's gonna have some form of like ARG with these locations if this is actually a thing. Scott, I have an idea for that too, hit me up. The menu would serve pizza, obviously, but also themed meals like Chica's chicken wings or Bonnie's breakfast for dinner, since you know, eggs. Maybe Foxy's flapjacks? It will definitely use a little work, but I'm honestly thinking it would taste and look incredible, both the menu and the food respectively. I have a design in mind, but let's be honest, I can't show my whole hand, can I? No, I actually gotta leave some stuff to actually hopefully make this a thing. So, uh, cause you know, if there's some mystery, Scott might actually like, you know, cause we all know how he loves mystery. And Scott, by the way, I'm happy to help. I love this series and would travel to see a Fazbear restaurant like this happen. And if you go with the Florida location, like I suggested, everything is open, so you're already good to go. Maybe not morally speaking, but just like roleplay William Afton and you'll be fine. Well, first of all, let's get this out of the way instantly. If FNAF was real, it would be horrible. Just straight up. Five kids would have gone missing in one of their locations, and the company probably would have closed down. But let's assume that people would still end up going, whether it's because they didn't believe the lies, or thought that the government made it up, or because it's their choice, or because they're a YouTuber who wants views. Why are you looking at me like that? Well, assuming that people still went to the restaurant because perhaps maybe they vanished around the area instead of inside the place, what would it be like to live in a real Five Nights at Freddy's? For a kid, it would be pretty awful, but you also wouldn't know it. The world would be dangerous and anyone could be William Afton's next victim, but you wouldn't know that there was a serial killer on the loose with murderous animatronics able to disguise themselves and hide in plain sight that are willing to kill at any moment. But I mean, like, to be fair, that's also like real life, minus the animatronics. For adults, if you have kids, you may be worried. I mean, any parent is always worried about their kids, but if there was a group of kids who went missing in your area, I'm sure that there would at least be a small amount of paranoia. And honestly, it would be reasonable. I mean, I grew up in a house where my father was always worried. So much so that my sister couldn't walk up to her friend's house up the street without him watching to make sure she was okay. And while that would probably be extreme for most parents, if there was a very real threat of kidnapping, I'm sure that there would be a lot of curfews. For the sake of this entire thing, we also have to assume that the police didn't investigate the interiors of the animatronics themselves, despite them smelling like death and leaking body fluids, including blood. Since that's something literally anyone with common sense would check when investigating the disappearance of children and then learning that animatronics are leaking blood and smelling like a dead body. But what of the technology that we see in these games? Would animatronics that can alter their appearance be realistic? No. Of course not. The springlock suits, the illusion discs, the twisted animatronics, and the like are all extremely improbable considering the actual technology of not only our time, but the 80s when this would have normally taken place. At least, if we 
have a rough idea of the timeline, which honestly at this point, we could be totally wrong about the timeline. The technology in the games is so highly advanced that we have absolutely no idea what else they could have access to. They could have smartphones in the 80s for crying out loud. And if they don't, then William should have capitalized on that rather than murdering countless innocent kids because he could have literally been a billionaire. The highly advanced technology would have to be disregarded in terms of the abilities of William Afton. So while this seems like a fight that nobody could really win, realistically, it wouldn't be as bad as we think, at least in those terms. Since even Chuck E. Cheese, the closest thing to Freddy Fazbear's in our world, obviously, still only has the most simple robotic abilities known to man. Despite the popularity of Five Nights at Freddy's and their ability to capitalize on that trend by taking some of those concepts, like the advanced robotics, not the dead kids, and then converting them into real life. Because like the concepts in the actual pizzeria, not not having kids go missing, like I said, that's that's a bad idea. Although based on comments left on previous videos, especially about how a real life Freddy's would happen, there have been plenty of people that are willing to die, or more likely to go to Chuck E. Cheese if it was more dangerous for some reason. Y'all are weird. But one final query. How would YouTubers handle it? Clearly, there are YouTubers in this world thanks to the mention of Matt Pat, or at the very least Game Theory in the Fast Bear Frights books, so what of the others? Well, we would most likely not be talking about FNAF, something that I'm sure a lot of you would enjoy, but also something that you wouldn't be aware of, which is a whole other can of worms that I won't be getting into today, because you wouldn't know about FNAF because FNAF wouldn't be a thing. However, I'm sure that there would be plenty of true crime and conspiracy YouTubers heading to A or the same Freddy Fazbear's where the kids went missing in order to solve the case. Or really just talk about it and get nowhere with it. Hmm. Sounds like someone I know. Since they don't have the clearance or the equipment to do an actual investigation or on a potentially closed case. Shane Dawson would 100% have gone there for that same conspiracy theory video, and the psychic twins would definitely have showed up at some point and definitely sensed something, but not quite known what it was. Ooh. Matt Pat may have made a food theory video about it because he made a food theory video about Chuck E. Cheese, but the thing is, these YouTubers coming to investigate, would they be William's next targets? It's an interesting question, because as far as we know, he's only killed one adult, and that was Henry. Every other victim has been a kid, so while they may be in more danger, there would clearly be a bigger issue in trying to deal with these YouTubers, especially if they get killed or die mysteriously shortly after visiting a Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. It would probably start some form of curse rumor that would only get more people to go there to try to solve that case. But how would Freddy's have dealt with the pandemic? Would they have made enough to survive the years of quarantine? Or would they, like our Chuck E. Cheese, have to file for bankruptcy? Would they get to open their pizza plex? Or would some problematic tweets from William Afton rise and cause the restaurant to get cancelled for calling Chica a he? These are all good questions that we will never really have an answer for because, well, FNAF isn't real. Due to the massive success, and even more so the unfortunate closing of Chuck E. Cheese, it was clear the stage was set, no pun intended, for a new contender in children's entertainment. The menu is simple, since it's on a monitor and needs to be seen at a distance, with a red border and simple sans serif text describing the various dishes and listing prices, with images of the dishes of the four major characters on each of the screens. Freddy's Pizza, Chica's Chicken Wings, Bonnie's Breakfast for Dinner, and Foxy's Ultimate Nachos. I was going to do Ultimate Fries, but kids are going to find nachos more exciting than fries, even if the whole alliteration thing makes sense. And while the horror events are focused on adults, the majority of the fan base and patrons are going to be children. Hopefully not missing ones. Obviously, you can also offer alcoholic beverages like beer and perhaps margaritas for the parents of the kids during the day, and all the adults that will be coming in during the horror nights, more on that later. But other than that, it's a fairly straightforward menu. The menu has to be simple for the kids and anyone looking from a distance, and this is the kind of stuff I actually went to school for. <laughs> I went over the interior design in the last part briefly, but only offered ideas instead of actually providing examples. So let's do that. 
Like I said last time, I think the purple sections of the wall should be replaced with red and black squares like we see in the original maps. And the white and black squares with the red outlines on the walls should go around the joint as well. We've seen the interior in the first few games, so we might as well just recreate something similar. The booths could just be repainted or they could be separated into sections based on what animatronic is your favorite. Same with the party tables. With sections for Foxy, Bonnie, Chica, and Freddy. With posters for each characters indicating those sections as well as banners to indicate it overhead so you can see it at a glance. The stage may come with a separate section for Foxy known as the Galaxy Stage for Chuck E. Cheese, which would easily be converted into Pirate's Cove. It's already a circle, you just put up a curtain. The arcade is probably the biggest reason anyone went to Chuck E. Cheese, the second being the recycled pizza conspiracy, and the third being because of the characters. However, the kids this time around will be coming for the FNAF characters and be staying for the arcade. The arcade could be filled with the normal games we see at normal Chuck E. Cheese's. Skee-ball, whack-a-mole, basketball, knock-a-clown, all the rest. However, the biggest showstoppers could be FNAF-themed versions of these games. Whack-a-mole could be whack a mini Rena, and knock a clown, you know, the one where you like throw the balls at the clown or like you throw them at his teeth, could be popping Balloon Boy's balloons. There could be a photo booth that puts a nightmare animatronic or spring trap behind the people in the booth for a real scare, and you could include custom games like Fruity Maze, Midnight Motorist, and Security Puppet. There are plenty of people who've made their own arcade cabinets. Take this one from the YouTube channel I like to make stuff. Bob does an incredible job. And all Scott would really need to do is code full versions of these games. Oh no, a game dev having to code new games, so difficult. Actually, not even new games, games that he's already made, just full versions. The games would be incredibly popular and would result in high revenue since they wouldn't really provide tickets, so they'd just be spending coins to play real FNAF games, but getting nothing other than that in return so your prize counter doesn't lose anything. This is how the businesses think. They could also make machines for arcade versions of the original FNAF games, maybe having buttons that flip through cameras and you need to find Foxy before he gets to you or something along those lines. The prize counter could have a real version of the FNAF puppet box there, playing its signature music to provide a reason for why it's still closed. However, this could potentially be opened at night during the horror nights. If not, the person working at the prize counter could simply be dressed like the puppet. The prize counter could offer things similar to the one from Help Wanted, and offering signature items such as stuffed baskets of exotic butters, which have already been made by Funko. They could also offer FNAF Funko Pop figures, with rarer ones being valued higher as well as potentially Switch and console versions of the games, along with the smaller prizes that are just meant to keep people from getting the big prizes by saving up. You know, the kids will impulse buy them. That's why they're there. This could also feature recreations of things like the Lore Keeper Ending Certificate, which you could potentially get by presenting something given to you after beating all three of the FNAF 6 games. You know, the ones in the custom cabinets I mentioned. There is way more we can talk about this, trust me. Now, the Horror Nights are what I find the most interesting out of these new ideas, with maybe these happening once or twice a week instead of every night like I said last time, <laughs> thinking logistically and knowing that most people won't want to work all the nights. 9pm would be when they would normally close, so instead, how about closing for an hour while the team sets up for a special treat for all who dare to return? The restaurant could be lit with black lights, revealing blood stains on the wall along with handprints and maybe some text written in blood, or paint that shows up under a black light and not during the day. The lights in the bathrooms could be flickering and most of the arcade machines would be off, aside from any that make loud noises, distract well, or could scare you. Skee ball, basketball, balloon popping for example, as well as any custom ones like the FNAF 6 Lorekeeper minigames, or if any of the 8-bit minigames from FNAF 2 were recreated. Obviously they would include jump scares at the end. The food would be limited to whatever you wanted, probably taking away the breakfast for dinner. And you could have actors walking around in nightmare themed suits, with the animatronic program to make sudden movements, since they need to move to keep their servos from locking up, but they can't really walk around. The music that plays could be replaced with atmospheric and scary themed music, like what we use for our videos, with periodic screams and maybe a couple faded door shakes and calls from Phone Guy, making sure that Scott Coffin makes an appearance in the first Freddy's location. This would be the first pizzeria to do something like this, as of my knowledge, and the possibilities are endless. It would be a great first date, as long as you're both into it, and it would increase profits tenfold, basically turning the place into a diet bar with horror elements. 
elements. Keeping the place open until 2 a.m. when you have last call at 1 or 1.30, I don't know, I don't know how bars work, I turned 19 and then I didn't really go to bars and then the whole pandemic thing happened, so I can't really go to bars now. Yeah, I don't know how bars work. I could talk about cash flow and investments, but that doesn't really interest you, I'm sure.